So if you can tell me quickly first a little bit about live programming and how that works with the Wall Street Journal. So the live programming is a really important part of how we dynamically tell the story every day on the Wall Street Journal homepage. We think it's important when there is breaking news in the world that we have a live service and that we are a dependable place for people to turn to, to hear and to see with video and, and sounds what's making news. In the case of um, the uprising in the Middle East last summer or uh, cratering markets in Europe, whatever it is, being able to go live is a really important part of telling our story dynamically. It's also, live video production is also a really important um, efficiency gain for the way we produce video. So all of our live programming is available on demand. And in fact, most of the consumption of the video happens on demand, not in the moment, but we like to provide both. And we find that um, the live production every day means that our journalists are able to produce quite a lot of video every day. Now you mentioned video, and obviously that's a huge part of the content and how your users actually engage with you. In terms of niche publishers, how much of um, the success is related to the type and the quality of video that you publish? So I think that what people are really uh, gravitating to when they come to WSJ Live, which is our video service, is the unique expertise and the unique perspective that comes from the, uh, from the journalists that we have covering the news every day. When a journalist has spent weeks and some cases months researching a really unique story, an exclusive or a really um, detailed take on, on, a, on a news event, people really enjoy hearing from that individual, the person who knew the story inside out. And many of our personalities that people have only known through the written word are now becoming alive and becoming um, three dimensional, if you will, through video format. So it's a great way for people to access a, a deeper, more emotional connection with the expertise that we have in our um, journalistic staff all around the world. It's also an important um, aspect of our programming um, selection. We are very committed to producing video and covering video subjects that are consistent with the Wall Street Journal's um, editorial mission at large. So we've tried to pair the video programming we have with our well-known print franchises like Off Duty or Heard on the Street or the other video franchises that we have, Digits for example, which is a franchise that lives in both video as well as through our live blogging platform and uh, in print. Now, how much of the production side can you, I mean, how well can you rely on your in-house staff? Do you need to bring people in from the outside? Because it's, it's, it's a pretty big production in terms of scale. It's big and it's also varied. And we uh, consciously choose to put more and less production value into different types of programming. So for example, with our off-duty franchise, which is a daily show hosted by Wendy Baum that really keys off the lifestyle content that's in our off-duty print franchise, we have invested with outside uh, producers and outside um, providers to help us um, boost not only the quality of the production, but also to boost the volume of content. So we do uh, cooking segments, we do uh, car reviews, we do travel reviews, we do a lot of our own on location uh, shooting, whether it's about fashion or other leisure pursuits. And we do partner with outside production houses to help us make that happen. And uh, we've heard that you know, the Wall Street Journal uh, has about 18 platforms that it publishes on. How much of your traffic and your brand awareness and more importantly revenue actually stems from that syndication? That's a great question. About half of our traffic is now coming from uh, sources other than WSJ.com. And that's a whole host of things from, uh, from Apple TV, YouTube, uh, and Five Men, which is more of a traditional syndication model. Uh, so we have quite a broad range of types of syndication. And um, it's been a very important part of our growth strategy. It's still early days, and I think it's difficult for us to know exactly where all of those different experiments go long term. But we made a commitment at the beginning of this journey to be um, as ubiquitous as we possibly could to try everything. So how much of your um, other video content is generating revenue for you outside of live? 
Well, life is a really important part of how we produce. It's also a really important part of the um, of the experience that we want to communicate when a user comes to our, our sites and to our products. But the majority of the video consumption does happen in an on-demand, um, you know, playback mode. And therefore, the majority of our monetization is happening uh, through clips and segments that we're serving up on demand. So although we might produce it in a live uh, format initially, and even broadcast it in a live format initially, what we find is that long tail of both consumption of the video and therefore the monetization of it is really happening on demand. So the majority of our revenue would come through the uh, on-demand components of, of our video uh, production at this point. We're always experimenting and from time to time we might have unique sponsorship opportunities that are associated with a live broadcast. But I think we continue to see both the mixture of live and on-demand being really the, the mix of the product going forward. How much of your revenue is actually coming from your print subscriptions and how much compared to your digital um, subscriptions? Both continue to be a really important part of our revenue model. We are very committed to print. We've continued to invest heavily in growing the print franchise and making it the number one newspaper in America. So it continues to be a source of, of uh, growth and of new revenue, both on the advertising side and on the on the um, subscription side. That being said, we're, we are successfully translating a lot of both the audience and the advertising base into our digital products. And so we continue to manage the portfolio holistically um, and be very committed to growing both. But what do you see in terms of generating more revenue, the digital or the print side? The um, print is still the most important part of our business at this stage and we continue to really uh, get ex very excited about the growth of digital. Um, it's a very important part of the overall mix, but we're committed to print for the long term. Okay, great. And finally, in terms of apps, anything on, you know, on the horizon? And we're about to launch a new video center, a new video live, uh, WSJ Live Center on our digital network. We're extremely excited about that because it's going to take the on-site video experience to a whole new level. The kind of video-centric experience that consumers have told us they love through WSJ Live, the apps that we have on iPhone, I, um, on iPad and um, other platforms, we're now going to be bringing that to the website. So that's coming up in the next couple of days and we're very excited about it.